So you can see even during this cold time of the year, we've got some uh, some tomato blossoms. Oh, look at that, eh? Yeah, so they're getting ready. We'll get a few hot days, and then we'll start making some fruit again. And there we are, tomatoes in January. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Ever since we did the story on the Kinney family earthship in Alberta, the number one question is what is that passive solar house like in the middle of the cold, dark Canadian prairie winter? This week, we visit a familiar place and a familiar face. Welcome back to the Kinney Family Earthship. I'm Duncan Kinney. I'm the former production manager and editor with Green Energy Futures, and you're here in my family's Earthship. When we last visited the Kinney Family Earthship in southern Alberta, Michael Reynolds and the crew from Earthship Biotecture were still building the Earthship with a large volunteer crew. It was the height of summer and a hot plus 30 degrees Celsius outside. In winter, the prairie transforms into a cold and inhospitable place that to some resembles a lunar landscape. But despite outside temperatures dipping as low as minus 20 to minus 30 degrees Celsius, the Earthship remains quite hospitable. We're a year and a half since the Earthship was constructed in the summer of the year previous and it's been um, really incredible, really happy to have it. It's been performing really well and the question we get every time that people send me a, a, a question over the internet or see me in person, they're like, well, how does it do in the winter? How does it do in the winter? And here's the like perfect example of, of a winter kind of experience here in the airship. So it's the middle of January. It's been cloudy and crappy weather for four or five straight days. It is about minus 15 outside right now. So we've had the stove going uh, since we woke up this morning. Uh, and it's 20 degrees inside and it's uh, it's been it's really pleasant in here and that's just with the kind of sunshine streaming in and this tiny little wood stove that only takes wood that's about yay big. Yes, you heard right. In the dead of winter, the Kinney Earthship drops to 14 degrees Celsius at night and thanks to passive solar energy, bounces right back to 22 degrees on a sunny day without any additional heat. The Kinneys use a small wood stove to provide supplemental heat on cool mornings or cloudy days. The Earthship gets all of its electricity from a modest 4 kilowatt solar system with batteries. For only the second time ever, the Kinney Earthship ran out of electricity the day we were there. Well, yeah, so it is the worst case scenario. There's just not very much production right now. It's been several days in a row of cloudy weather, so you're not getting the solar production that you need. The AC did uh, tick off this morning. There's still, um, everything that's on DC is still running, so the fridge is still running, the water is still running. But right now, we're just charging up our system with this kind of weak, uh, morning daylight in order to uh, tick on our AC as soon as we can. It's pretty easy to build an earth ship that supplies more electricity. However, the Kinneys are energy conservers by nature. The next day, the sun came out and recharged the system. Duncan Kinney explains. Oh yeah, if you wanted to go Tim Allen, you know, grunting, you could have a giant airship with this huge system on it, with a massive battery system, and you could have just as much, um, you know, you could have super redundant, like awesome huge systems, and it would just be like a regular house. But we're a little more conservation oriented, so we do have a big propane tank out the side of the house. And that propane tank, uh, which we've had for a year and a half now, is still 65% full, so we, we don't use very much of it. But that's what we do cook with, so we do have a stove that is um, built to run on, uh, on propane. It's a natural gas stove that's been converted to run on propane. We have a backup kind of on-demand hot water heater for uh, if you want to take a warm shower and it's not necessarily sunny out. And then we also have a clothes dryer that runs off of that propane system as well, but I don't imagine that that clothes dryer gets used very often. They usually just hang it because it's so bright and sunny in here. Perhaps the single most important energy system in the Earthship is its passive solar energy design. The entire front of the home is a greenhouse, which collects passive solar energy for heating and to grow food year round. Oh yeah, so if it was minus 15 outside but sunny, that greenhouse would get up to 10, 15, 16 degrees and it would be very pleasant in there. And inside, the living space would get up to, you know, 20, 21, 22 degrees, no problem. You'd actually, it gets really, really nice in here if it's, no matter what temperature it is outside, if it's a nice sunny day. Glenn Kinney is Duncan's father. The greenhouse is vital to the Earthship concept of harvesting passive solar energy 
treating wastewater, and yes, growing food. In the dead of the Canadian prairie winter, Glenn gives us a tour. So, Nick said it's a, all an experiment on what can grow and what doesn't grow. And we, we planted peppers the beginning of last year, but nothing grew for a long time. And then all of a sudden they started growing later in this season. So here's one of our, uh, our peppers that uh, has continued to grow. And there we are, tomatoes in January. Yeah, there's another. This is one of our volunteers that we found outside and just brought it inside a couple of years ago. And for, for greens, we've got some Swiss chard and I got some, I planted some turnips just to get some turnip greens and some, we've got some green onions that are growing here and some, some different herbs. We've got some, um, I think that's rosemary there and some parsley. The Earthship collects rainwater, which is stored in underground cisterns that hold 26,000 liters of water. The system even uses solar thermal energy to melt snow in the winter. The Earthship also treats and recycles water. Duncan explains. All right, so we're in the greenhouse right here and, and the gray water system is just kind of just underneath this layer of soil here. So you would turn on uh, the showers and the sinks in the bathroom. And that water would go into the reception cell, it would filter down into another pipe and then slowly infiltrate uh, into the gray water system here. And it's just a very slight grade, runs all the way down the length of the greenhouse here. And uh, that water either gets, when it gets to the end, either gets pumped back to the top of the greenhouse or it gets pumped into the house to flush the toilets with it. So yeah, the water system here has been incredible. It's one of the kind of best features of the house. We get about 13 inches of rain a year and there's like cactus everywhere. So it's not like we're getting a lot of rain. And uh, we've never been below like three quarters full, a system full of water. And it's, uh, yeah, the water system has been great aside from having to kind of clean the filters uh, if you get uh, like a lot of um, silt in the system. It's been one of the best parts of this house. It's been rock solid. Well, that's it for our trip back to the Kinney family Earthship. Learn more, check out our blog, photo gallery, and podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Take a look back at our first trip to the Earthship when it was under construction for an idea of how this amazing project came together.